All right, you excited for this one? It's the first ever Stand and Bang matchup, and we've got a good one, man. We got Borakua Brandon, and he's going up against a guy that talks a big game, and it's Citrix Citrus. Let's go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Are you listening? Ricky J. Sparks. What is going on, people? Finally, we are starting this tournament. I'm so excited, and I feel like it's been a while, man, since we actually sat down and talked over some fights. And um, I just want to address something not MMA-related, and it is the victory by one of our Canadian tennis players, Bianca Andrescu. She won the U.S. Open on the weekend, and it was the first time ever that a female or male Canadian tennis player has won a Grand Slam, and she defeated... Serena Williams to win the US Open and also you can't forget about he's not Canadian but Rafael Nadal winning his 19th Grand Slam and I'm working on my Rafael Nadal impression so here it is well Ricky J I tell you right now I I try to do the best I can uh, Roger a good player but for me 19 Grand Slam <clears throat> is a good thing I try to do the best no you try I try to go hit the balls uh, balls deep if I if I try to say but uh, you know I try to do the best balls deep meaning the tennis ball going deep not what you think and uh, that's it I try to do the best I can for my team and uh, and for me. Thank you very much, Ricky. <laughs> so here we go, man. Hopefully, let me know what your thoughts are on my impersonation of Rafael Nadal. So here we go. This is interesting that um, Brandon, I'm going to just call him Brandon because I don't want to butcher the first part of his name, but why would he pick GSP? And for all you guys that are not familiar with me and the guys that I like. GSP is my favorite fighter of all time. You know, I've, sp I've spoken to him once on the Sure Dog Radio Network back in the day in 2008. And um, even before that, I've always loved GSP, his mannerisms, his style, everything about him. But why would you pick him in a stand and bang matchup? Brandon must have something hidden up his sleeve, man. But uh, decided to roll with GSP and Citric Citrus. He has a great pick in Bisbing because he's got great stamina and he has a great stand-up game. But you got to give it up for Brandon for doing a nice job early, using those kicks, pressuring Citric Citrus. I don't know if I should just call him Citric or Citrus. I think Citrus is easier to say. But this is a, a nice chess match that we have going on here. Both guys are not turning into Swiss Lebax, and I know he's watching. Big ups to Swiss for helping me set up this tournament, but Swiss Lebax would just turn into the Walking Dead, man. Zombie on forward and try to take your head off, and these guys aren't implementing that kind of game plan. They're being very calculated with their shots. It's almost like they're scared to get into that phone booth. Come on, man. <laughs> Engage. <laughs> Engage. And it was so funny. I know I'm going to be um, jumping into or falling into tangents or sidetracking into stuff, but I just feel like sharing a lot of, you know, childhood stories with you guys. But when I used to go to J games, baseball games back in the day, and um, the opponent would always try to throw to first to throw a runner off, you know, on, off of first. He would try to pick him off. And if I'm in the stands, man, I would always yell out, come on, it's a school night, pitch the ball. <laughs> and uh, in this situation, these guys got to engage here. But they are very calculated with what they're doing, and you got to respect that. But look at this distance that they're keeping. Well, there we go. Citrus is moving in, man. He's moving in, looking to pop in and out. And... Um, don't forget, man, GSP, no, nobody did that better of hopping in and out of kicking range and striking range. He did that. Oh, nice footwork. He did that against Matt Hughes, UFC 65, brother. And you know what happened at the end of that fight. GSP fed Matt Hughes a shin to the face for dinner and won the UFC welterweight title for the first time. But I'm very, very cautious. First fight here. And you know, <laughs> the jitters are in full effect here, that's for sure. But hopefully after this first round, these guys are going to be like, you know what, it's just another match. Let's try to engage a little bit more. So here we go. Now they're both coming at each other a little bit more. I like how uh, <laughs> the one-twos are getting thrown out there. Nice hook by Citrus there. I feel like Brandon is doing a nice job with the pressure action, man. He's, he's really doing a good job at getting that octagon control. 
and maintaining it and pushing Citrus back. And now Citrus is coming forward. But how patient is Brandon here? <laughs> He's in no rush to get things going. I think he wants to he wants to see what Citric has, man. And Citrus, you know, he talks a big game in the chats, man. You gotta give it up for him and let's see if he can put his his put his actions into play here or put his uh words into play is what I'm trying to say. Nice, nice slip by Citrus right there. Can't do it too many times though, because those really good players will just give you one stinky hook and rock you or drop you. It's a very even fight. Nice lead kick to the body. Nice. That was a rear leg side kick to the body by Brandon. Nice. Citrus needs to be careful though with that kick to the body because it leaves his head wide open. If you go in there naked with it and um, <laughs> don't keep your hands up, you could get flatlined. Uh oh! GSP, man. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if that's the greatest pick in a stand and bang tournament. And Citrus gets the first rock of the fight. Let's see if Brandon can be a little more offensive here. I just feel like he's doing a nice job being defensive, but I think he's being a little too defensive here. And now Citrus is opening up, laying some shots in. <laughs> Tried to get him up the middle there with the uppercut. Good blocking by Brandon, but remember, the first two fights are only three rounds, so Brandon, he's swimming upstream here, man. He is behind. Well, I don't know, it's kind of, um, uh, it's a little bit unsure about that first round. Could have gone either way, in my opinion, but I feel like seeing this, this is Citrus's fight to win right here, man. He's up in the scorecards in this round, that's for sure. And Citrus is doing a good job being <laughs> being defensive as well, man. He's blocking those shots to the body, not allowing Brandon to get off some strikes. But Citrus is stamina, man. He's got to be careful here. He's got to be so careful with his stamina. Can't let it drain too much because in this <laughs> in the stand and bang tournament, you have nowhere to hide. If your stamina is low, if you're battered and bruised, you can't clinch you can't grab a leg you can't go for takedowns man so unbelievable kind of looks like ooh, could be two rounds in the books for citric citrus there he had more significant strikes in that first round he didn't have more total strikes but significant strikes i believe outweigh the total strikes so let's see what happens here i want to see brandon open up a little bit i want to see him just Roll the dice. Oh, <laughs> but he gets dropped with a nice uppercut. Great timing by Citrus. And if I'm in Citrus's corner right here, I would just stick to boxing. You know, his opponent can't grab his arm for a free punish. So with those kicks, it's kind of risky because guys can grab those legs and make you pay. So I would just stick to boxing. Oh, but <laughs> why not throw a knee? Why not throw a knee? Oh my goodness, and Brandon. Oh, down he goes. And Brandon is in La La Land right here. This is a matter of time and it's over. Just like that. Citric Citrus. And uh, man, <laughs> I love this guy because he is so confident. He is Mr. Confident in the chats, in, um, in my videos, and in live streams. He loves to talk a big game about his stand-up ability. And he showcased that, man. Started out a little slow, but that was part of the strategy, man. He started out in first gear and then went into fifth and got the W. But let's get in to the second fight. And before we get into the second fight, I just want to tell you guys that I want to try to do things a little bit differently in this tournament. From time to time, I want to get some of you guys, I want to engage my audience. I want to get some of you guys to help me commentate on these fights, man. And I would really love that. You know, this channel is only, you know, with 33 plus thousand subscribers because of all of you. And I want to get you guys involved. So what I'll do is from time to time on my Discord, and I'll try to put a link to my Discord. I'll send out a mess message saying, is anybody available? And if you're available when I'm about to record, I'll send you the link of the fights and we'll commentate together doing a conference call on Discord. I think that'll be awesome. 
And um, I don't care who you are, man. I don't care if you have 100,000 subscribers or one subscriber. I'm going to get you in on it because I want to engage my audience and keep you guys involved. And that's what it's all about. Let me know if you like that idea. And you can help me color commentate for sure, man. I would love that. So anyway, let's get back to the fight. I like how Brandon's like, you know what? Forget GSP. I am going to use a guy that is <laughs> probably the best at standing and banging in this game. And it's Conor McGregor. You know you're going to see a lot of Conor McGregor's in this tournament. You know you're going to see some uh, Costas, man. You're going to see a lot of Costas, a lot of McGregor's. But let's see if Brandon could even things up. And I already see him doing a better job here, just opening up, being more of a threat on the feet. I felt like he was being a little too much of an observer in that first fight. And with GSP, you have to be so careful with that not-so-good head health. But with McGregor, man, he's got like a head of stone. He could stand in that pocket. He can exchange. He could throw bombs. And speaking of bombs, he's got two bombs, one in the right, one in the left. So... When you're facing a McGregor, got to be so careful. And when you're using McGregor, you could really put the pedal to the metal, especially on the feet. You don't have to worry about takedowns or clinches. That's why this tournament is so unique, so awesome in a way, because it's all about the stand-up, man. It's all about guys showcasing their boxing, kickboxing. It's almost like a glorified kickboxing tournament. Glorified Muay Thai tournament, that's for sure. But good job on Brandon on landing those strikes when Citrus was coming in. He was doing he's doing a nice job at just observing what Citrus has to offer here and trying to trying to counter and, and land. Nice job by Citrus leading with that kick, that nice little high kick, and then following up with a nice shot right there. But Brandon is Mr. Cool, man. I real it's really a it's really fun watching to see just how patient this guy is. And he's fine with hanging back and letting Citrus do his thing. Just can't take a lot of damage and he's doing a great job in this second fight not taking a lot of damage. And you know what? I would have to give this first round to Big Daddy Brandon Double B's man. Ooh, but according to the stat cast right here Citrus did land more significant strikes, but just looking through with the naked eye, man, I really thought that Brandon won the round, but not perfect. I'm not right <laughs> all the time. And judging by the stats there, got to give that to Citrus. But I, I really like what Brandon was doing, though. But he's got to be more aggressive, brother. Be more aggressive. Don't be intimidated by the juice, man. Oh, every time I say Citrix Citrus's name, I think of Sunny Delight. You guys used to have that as a kid? Sugar in a bottle. That was our energy drink in the 80s. <laughs> Sunny D, baby. And the Citrus, he is okay with backpedaling, getting on his bicycle, and trying to get Brandon to come to him. I like what he's doing, too. He'll sometimes march forward, and then he'll go back. Nice. Good one, too, by Brandon, though. Nice. Brandon's doing a nice job pushing forward, trying to get Citrus to open up, but he can't be taking those shots to the head. Nice. These guys are <laughs> listening to what I'm saying. Nice punish right there. Ooh. Oh, way to go, Brandon. Brandon with the first drop of this fight. And in this stand and bang kind of style, once you get that first drop, it's kind of like going, you got the wind at your back, man. Oh no, it's over. Oh, he, what the heck? He blew out his knee. Have you ever seen that before? Citrix, Citrus blew out that left knee right there, falling back. Oh, that reminds me of when, um, what was that that happened? Oh, man. Krokop, when Krokop got flatlined, um, and um, he blew out his... It looked like he blew out his knee. Who was it against? I can remember his face, but I just can't remember his name. Let me know in the comments. That's what happens when you're recording kind of live without editing. But um, 
Oh, what was his name? And he fought Randy Couture. I could see his face. It starts with a G. Let me know. It's like a little MMA trivia. Here we go. The third fight. And um, it's five rounds. And just to let you guys know, man, I'm lenient when it comes to the selection. It's totally up to the two guys fighting. And you could use the same guy twice. And you have to say that if people were betting on this, you got to... Got to give it up for Brandon. He's got to be the slight favorite going into this championship-style fight, the third and final fight. And I think Citrus has to respect the power of McGregor. I don't think he respected the power that McGregor has, man, in that second fight. He really did pay for it. Hopefully his left knee is okay too, by the way. <laughs> but let's see what happens here. Again, in that first round, you know, Citrus was doing the better job. I, I, I kind of thought that his his whiffing was a little too much. I th felt like he was swatting flies here a little too much. And he's kind of doing that here in this third fight. And that may come back to bite him. Especially facing a patient player like Brandon. And, um, man, I think facing a patient guy like Brandon is just so hard to deal with. Because... If you keep on throwing strikes and he keeps on blocking it and you keep on whiffing, later on in the fight, you're going to be in big trouble. Oh. But Brandon's okay with taking that center of the octagon and he's trying to bait Citrus into coming to him. <laughs> Citrus is not having anything of it. This is really, really interesting. You know, in the beginning, when we first saw this matchup kind of playing out, it was like they were both scared to engage, but I got to take that back. It's just one guy's trying to implement his game plan. The other guy's trying to implement his game plan as well. And at times, you have a stalemate. But Citrus, <laughs> at times, like I said earlier, he's marching forward. He had success with it, but he's got to hope and pray, man, that he doesn't miss on his shots because Brandon, he's... Loading up. He's kind of playing like my good buddy Marshall Mind in a way. Like hanging back, waiting for you to make that one mistake, and then making you pay with all that stamina. And nobody does it better than Mar Marshall Mind, man. Big big ups to him. Shoutouts to Marshall. And um, maybe we can get a little thing going on that the winner of this tournament will face Marshall Mind in a glorified kind of um, match like a Mayweather <laughs> McGregor kind of style match but let me know if you want to see that all these questions in this video thank you so much for tuning in too I think we're nearing in on 20 minutes running and um, I just feel like I just started recording I'm having so much fun but um, I don't know man you got to give that round to Citrus on that but uh, I kind of understand what Brandon's doing right here. I feel like he's trying to drain that stamina by being defensive. And it didn't work in that first fight, obviously, with GSP, but using a McGregor, I feel like he has a good chance of winning later on in the fight. I still don't agree with the passiveness. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh nice duck. Oh, nice duck. But I don't agree with the passiveness that he has going on here. I feel like if he can just, I know he's like in gear one right here, but if he can just get to gear three and throw a little more, I feel like he can do some good damage, especially with a McGregor. So he's just throwing that jab out there, hanging back. <laughs> it's like both of these guys are counter fighting. Holy cow. And he's, he's fine with just popping that jab. Pop, pop, pop. He's just fine with that. He's got to watch it. Watch the slip action. You know, Citrix, Citrus, he's had a, he has a lot of fights under his belt. And he knows if people are going to dangle that jab out there. He's just going to slip straight you. Well, look at this. Let me know, man, in the comments. What do you think of these, <laughs> what do you think of these styles? The counter fighters. And it's funny because Citrus is like, you know what, if you're going to hang back, I'm just going to ride out the round. Look at this. <laughs> you know Francis Ngannou. It's 
probably like, come on, don't do what I did in, the, in my title fight. Oh man, that was, wasn't that one of the, it wasn't a title fight, but wasn't that one of the worst fights that you've ever seen? Jeez. It's pretty bad. I think the worst fight that I've seen where I was legit frustrated was that one. And Tim the Maniac Sylvia versus Jeff the Snowman Munson. It got to the point where uh, <laughs> the referee, Big Daddy John McCarthy, had to grab both of their hands like they were in trouble at recess. And he looked them both in the eye and he's like, this is a title fight, you need to fight. And remember what happened after that? After that fight, Tim Sylvia ended up winning a yawning decision. And um, Randy Couture was like sitting on his couch watching 80s movies. And then he got a call from Dana saying, come back and fight <laughs> for the... UFC heavyweight title and he did man oh nice rock by Citric but um yeah Randy did and he <laughs> he beat Tim Sylvia man it was a great fight if you have fight pass try to um try to look at that and I and UFC doesn't pay me to promote fight pass but I believe it's on there and um it was a great thing to see the old man winning and I remember <laughs> Randy's like not bad for an old man after he won when he did the post-fight interview, but um, back to this fight. Citrus did a great job in the last couple of minutes of stealing that round. He really did. And uh, it's two rounds in the books for him. But Brandon needs to wake up here, man. I'm really getting frustrated with Brandon, man, in my opinion, because he just needs to throw his strikes, do what he did in that second fight there he goes he's pressing forward but he's got to stop hanging back feel like I don't know if he respects Citrus's stand up a little too much but look at him just hanging back get right in there remember he won that second fight by feeding Citrus some uppercuts man and those uppercuts did some great damage but when you're way out here not going to be landing anything and I don't know if he's even thrown an uppercut in this fight, man. I would love to go back and check. But he's got, he has those opportunities there, especially when Citrus goes in there with those knees to the body. His head's wide open. He's got to get right in there and take some chances. And if you ask anybody, if you ask the Ed Parkers of the world, Swiss Labaxes, Unibot, all those guys that are in the tournament, all those top guys, Sometimes they have to roll the dice and take some chances. And, uh, you know, sometimes, for most times for those guys, they come out on the, on the right hand of the stick. But sometimes they don't. And, um, and they're fine with it. But in this fight game, you got to take some chances. Got to roll the dice. There he goes. Maybe just Brandon is just waiting for the fourth and fifth round. But I, I love his game. I'm not knocking Brandon. I love his game. I love his, I love his defensive style. I just feel like he would be more of a effective fighter if he just is just a touch, a couple gears more offensive. And this guy would be a force. But maybe he could steal this victory from Citrus as he's popping in that jab. But anything's possible with McGregor. But if he moves on, Brandon does to the second round. Needs a couple of training partners to get him just to be a little more offensive. And he's going to do some good things. Because his defense is great. His patience is really good. Almost a little too patient. I think Citrus here, he's realizing that, oh, crap, man. This is going to go five rounds. I better pace myself because look at his stamina. It's going down. It's going down. And how cool would that be, man, if Brandon could silence the critics and win in the fifth round or fourth round by just maintaining that stamina. But look at Citrus is, I feel like he's getting a little worried here. He's facing the defensive specialist right here. Oh, nice. Great job. I was gonna say that, uh oh. Oh. He had that window to punish right there and feed Citrus what he's been feeding him, but I feel like Citrus <laughs> doesn't feel like he has enough energy to finish this, man. It's kind of like the old classic, the tortoise and the hare, man. Remember what happened in that? <laughs> the hare started a little too fast and ended up gassing out. So hopefully that's not the case for Citrus. But this is really shaping up into being a very 
very odd matchup to be honest but I'm not saying it's not interesting because this is where it's getting really interesting because are we gonna finally see Brandon go balls to the wall here with all that stamina Brandon oh no but Citrus when he lands he really does a nice job at landing good shots good quick shots keeping his combo short he doesn't have all that pop in his shots that he did in the first couple of rounds but he's picking his spots properly here and that just goes to show you the the veteran presence that he has being able to land damage with the stamina that he's working with and he doesn't have super low stamina but it's not as high as Brandon's but Brandon's head is mangled here so he's got to go for it right here his tournament life is on the line and um, it's interesting to see Citrus kind of going for it here. Not hanging back, not banking this round because, in my opinion, it may be four rounds to nothing. But Brandon, it seems like Brandon's level of attack is the jab, jab, and that kick to the body. Someone's got to scream in his ear, throw the uppercut, brother. So he has opportunities, he was opportunity right there even just to throw a quick one. He's doing that nice uppercut to the body though. Body uppercut. Nice sway back. Nice, but Brandon's head is blinking, man. Really is blinking. <sighs> you kinda just want him to just go for it. Take the training wheels off, brother. And just go for it. Citrus is gassing out. And I wonder if Citrus is hitting that panic button too, thinking like, geez, I won't be able to finish this, Ricky. I won't be able to finish this, man, with the stamina that I have. But if you're in Citrus's corner, do you hang back and say to <laughs> say to yourself, you know what? I don't need to throw any more punches. I could just do what Brandon's been doing to me, man, in this fight and just hang back and be defensive, but no! Citrus is like, forget that. Don't leave it into the hands of the judges. <laughs> Don't leave it into the hands of the judges. And he's going for it. But I'm telling you, Brandon is one big shot away from turning this fight on its head. But he just can't seem to get inside. Nice hook right there. Brandon's got to get in there and throw some, a little more round strikes, man. He's throwing a lot of straight strikes, a lot of jabs. There he goes. Uh oh. 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 <laughs> and maybe this is what he's been wanting to do. Like I said, Citrus is in trouble. Citrus is in trouble here. And it's crazy. <laughs> the first fight of the tournament is something so bizarre. Oh, man. Something so bizarre. But let's see how much of a stamina boost. Mm. Whoever is recording this is looking and trying to figure out if they have enough rounds or if the, how many rounds they're behind. And that's the cool thing too. But I want to see how, the stamina boost, but I'm, I want, the cool thing too about this tournament is you don't know who submitted this fight, man. You don't know who, so it's kind of up in the air on who you think is gonna win this. Cause it used to be based on whoever submitted the fight, but you can't tell. And this is Brandon's round, man. Brandon, for all you, your fans out there, man. Go for it, brother. Citrus is in trouble, people. Oh. <laughs> and this is turning out to being quite the epic strategy by Brandon because Citrus is now turning into a pillow fighter and Brandon's got stamina to work with. He's just got to get in there. Get in that phone booth. Close that door. Oh, but what abilities by Citrus with no stamina to still fire back and this is gonna turn Brandon into the defensive mode action that we've been seeing. Oh, he can go for it here. Not enough kicks though too from Brandon. He should throw a nice little kick to the body. Not a lead side kick but a nice roundhouse kick to the body. Oh, he tries to go for the big home run hit right there and misses. But what head movement by Citrus. Gotta give it up for him for being able to not really take too much damage here in the last bit of this fight. Uh oh, but he is hurting. He's on wobbly legs, man. This is anyone's fight. This really is. 
Citrus's head is blinking. Brandon's head is blinking. This is anyone's fight. But Brandon needs to win by stoppage here. Citrus can lose this round and win by decision, so... Oh, nice slip straight action. Oh man, Brandon kind of waited a couple seconds too long to return the favor right there. He still has a chance. Good things happen when Brandon throws uppercuts. And we got a minute and 33 seconds left. This is crazy. This is where things get nuts. Oh, oh is it over? Remember, there's no way to pounce in the stand and bang tournament. But Brandon needs to push forward. Like I said, take your chances. Oh, but Citrus strikes back. Oh my gosh. And if you're still tuning in this deep into the video, much love to you, man. But you're witnessing just a great back and forth battle. And I think with Brandon, once Citrus has done his little combo set, that's when you got to strike back. Nice jab, uppercut to the body. Here we go. <laughs> Nearing 10 seconds. Wow, quick slip straight by Citrus. And I think this is going to go to a decision. Wow, unbelievable. And here we go, let's see. And it's Citrus winning by decision. And don't forget, if it ever goes to a decision, try not to bypass the decision because people wanna see it, man. People wanna see it, people wanna hear it. But what a battle. I think Brandon is a little too passive, but he showed great heart, man, especially taking Citrix Citrus all the way to a third fight into a five rounder. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on this fight. Let me know your thoughts on both of these guys. And I can't wait for the next video. All right, guys, this is Ricky J Baby from Ricky J Sports. Have a great day, afternoon, or night, brother. And don't forget, you are awesome. Are you intoxicated or something?